Okay, so let's have a look at the uh, load balancer add-on. So to get that, let's just have a look at what is the status of our Okay. Um, I still like to run it on here. Okay. So metal LL metal LB is not enabled, and it's as simple as just saying enable the thing's name. Okay. Now this port is quite important because you need to know what is the IP address range that it should generate an IP address on that you have access to. So now you may need to set up some stuff on your network. My network is 192.168, so I'm going to say 192.168.8, and I would like to go from 200 to 192.168.8.220 for argument's sake. So what this does is when we then use the load balancer, it will generate an IP address. So that uh, it's not a physical machine, but it'll still expose it as as as, as so it looks like it's a machine on your network. Um, and that's the the beauty about this. So I just want to copy uh, the load balancer into our nginx folder, and then we can just go and edit the load balancer and let's just have a quick look so we can just call this nginx front it's a load balancer port, port 80 port 80 and we can just call that nginx test. so how do i know what that name is so we can just go to services and it's this um when you look at the labels uh, and the selector, especially, I think it's the selector. So it's Nginx X test that we need to call. So if we look at our load balancer, it should be that. And we're saying we want to expose port 80, port 80, so port 80 on that container. So let's just have a look. Uh, cube control, apply, minus F load balancer. Okay, and then uh, of course what we can do, we, there's two ways to check, so cube control, get services, and uh, what we'll see it says pending there, um, now there may still be something that we need to do, if it stays pending it means there's some issue with our configuration, and I think we're going to be fiddling around with the configuration let's just ah there we go so the pending estate has changed so it is actually working just takes a while to assign the ip address so now what we're going to do we're going to copy the ip address and if we copy it in here we should get an nginx voila so this is kind of the point um uh where you now can create um your own uh kubernetes uh files and you can uh issue a load balancer and you can expose your own services and websites and backends um, to your development environment. So the next little exercise we're going to do, I've, like I said, I've prepared two images. One is a, well, we're going to use a standard Redis server and then um, I've created a very stupid, um, stupidly simple uh, um, uh, .NET Core um, MVC application that just uses the Redis as a, as a key value pair that you can just uh, add and, and delete uh, points with. And we'll have a look at how that would work in a moment. Um, so for now, I don't need, well, we can actually leave Nginx here because it'll be great to see. And also, if we go into services, um, we'll see what's happened here. So that Nginx is sitting there. That's my IP address, port 80. Uh, this Kubernetes dashboard is invaluable because you have no idea what you're doing wrong if you don't look at the errors. Now, of course, these logs and stuff can be, you can find it from the command line as well. I just find it much easier having the dashboard, especially if you're a beginner like me, um, to try and figure out how to work with Kubernetes. So uh, when 
we get back, we'll have a look at the very next level of Kubernetes.